Hello, everybody. All engineers, please raise your hand. Wonderful, at least 10. So uh, I must give a warning. I'm an engineer myself, and I really love this situation to speak about the power of design in a design event. Uh, but I have been doing this uh, for many years for many engineering students. And uh, engineers are interesting creatures. Uh, there are some, something that has happened in their minds. I have asked a question many, many times for uh, engineering students or engineers who have not been contaminated with any lectures of design and, and so forth. What does design mean to you? Well, uh, quite many of them are able to give an answer that uh, design is something that is uh, fancy, expensive and useless. Uh, if you give a bit more uh, time, well, yes, uh, many uh, agree that uh, these kind of uh, artifacts uh, are often designed, and uh, quite many also agree that products that compete heavily uh, on markets with the same technology, you must have the something that makes the difference between the, the product brands and so forth. But then, if we go to the hobby side, athletes, playing of golf, it seems to be no limit how much people are willing to pay for the gadgets to be better players or, or faster runners and so forth. There's one thing, a very simple metrics that is often used for uh, figuring out the added value. It's price per kilogram. And uh, this is the price of a beef uh, in the local market. But uh, how is it with some uh, engineered products? Paper, that is uh, produced in a very complex and really well fine-tuned process but the price per kilo is still uh, obviously less than one thousand dollars per one ton so less than one euro per kilo windmills uh, a one megawatt windmill may weigh some uh, 300 kilos and uh, cost for 1.5 million euros. So we are speaking about the kilo price of 5 euros. A bit more advanced technologies, maybe 50. These kind of fine mechanics, well-branded products, it's already 500 up to 2,000 euros per kilo. But I see that some of you are wearing glasses this is a very exciting example. The wet, uh, most lightweight frames for glasses, 1.8 grams, and uh, they are sold out with the price of 180 euros. So this equation is quite interesting. What is the customer paying for? Well, of course, the comfort and lightweight, but there must be something else. So these kind of things uh, are quite interesting and, and they raise some discussion with the engineers who often then ask the next question that if we are developing products for these kind of conditions, who cares about design? Well, uh, if you go to the factories and uh, look on this, I would say this is a very typical 1970s design for a complex process machine. A typical result uh, where we end up 
with the multi a disciplinary team compiled by mechanical engineers, manufacturing experts, process experts, instrumentation and automation and pneumatics and hydraulics, hydraulics experts. So everybody is doing well his or her job in their own silos, but the final outcome is not very easy to use, not very easy to maintain, and uh, it's, it's quite uh, complex and also uh, even not as reliable as we would like it to be. If we compare this to the next generation, you can see quite uh, obvious differences uh, in maintainability, operability, and even uh, lighting of the system uh, to, enabling, to, en to enable the operator to have a good vision to those most important uh, parts of the machine. And then the final version, everything's covered, uh, the moisture, dust, dirt uh, is kept inside, but when maintenance is needed, you can very easily remove the whole cover and uh, get good access to the heart of the machine. I have collected these uh, pictures of cars from uh, different advertisements and as you see there are cars uh, in a bit different kind of categories Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes, Citroën, Tata the cheapest uh, automotive uh, in serial manufacturing and uh, uh, oh, I forgot the name of that but uh, in the upper right corner it's uh, a low cost uh, car but uh, the thing is that, uh, have you ever noticed that in a magazine where there is an advertisement for ca selling cars, that in the corner somewhere there is a small text saying that the car in the picture is equipped with some special gear. Has anyone noticed something like that? Okay, my question is, what is that? What can you see from those pictures? Well, I can answer my own question. The only thing you can really see is that all the cars are equipped with aluminium wheels. And this is a nice topic to be discussed with engineers, because I can ask, tell me all the benefits that you will get by buying the aluminium wheels that are three times more expensive. Because there are none. But why are all the cars in the advertisements equipped with those? Well, that often wakes some thoughts. This is uh, from the production line from a Finnish tractor maker in 1950s. At that time, they already noticed that uh, the slogan, very well fitting to tractors, is that an appearance that will pull you on. Uh, since then, many things have changed, and uh, people think, okay, this is design. Yes, that's true, but it's only part of the truth. The real change has actually happened inside around the farmer. You must understand that farming is a very seasonal <clears throat> business. When uh, the most busy time is there, the farmers are working for 16 hours. Far away from their home, there is a need to carry some food stuff, computers for reporting for European Commission, <laughs> and uh, so forth. So a lot of effort and computer technology is applied for making his <clears throat> operational environment more efficient, more healthy, and not harming uh, the health in the long run. And even if you open the, open the hood of the tractor or a car, uh, everything is different from uh, older times. And this is also an interesting topic to be discussed. Why and what does it matter? 
and there are many also technical reasons why to do design uh, on, on such places that are not so often visible at all. So one of the key statements is that all artifacts made by, made by man, they are designed consciously or unconsciously by experts, that is quite rare, and often by well-meaning hobbyists. <laughs> so it's our decision which one we would like to apply, which approach shall we choose. It's often quite uh, much about uh, immaterial things and feelings and emotions. Imagine that you should go to the doctor uh, and some treatment must be given uh, to heal your disease. How would you feel when you come to the room before entering to this machine? You feel, uh, you know, uh, how do you feel? Okay. A bit scary. This uh, particular desi uh, de design or device is actually awarded by its good design uh, some 40 years back, but things change. At that time, there was a saying that a medicine is not good, no good if it does not taste bad. So maybe this design uh, is also something that you really can believe that this machine has the power for, for healing any disease. Maybe this kind of design is more uh, reflecting the thoughts of uh, this uh, decay. Maybe this machine is uh, familiar for many of you. Is there any, anyone who has, who, who has uh, this kind of Kenwood machine at home? Yes? Uh, actually, this picture, uh, I took it from a book that was published 50 years ago. So it's, it's quite uh, old design and uh, many things have changed during those days. I wouldn't go with this slogan to Finnish market anymore. Uh, but uh, one thing that has not changed that much, much is the machine itself. This is the model of 2013. So this is one aspect that uh, it is possible to come up with solutions that uh, do not get old-fashioned in a very short time and they will uh, carry over when the time passes. So for the engineering guys, my me main message is that it's not actually depending on that much. Are we speaking about process lines or free time gadgets or handheld electronic devices or healthcare issues? There's always some space uh, for design, but uh, <clears throat> why I'm telling this story is uh, to get forward, to avoid these kind of situations. The text here is in Finnish, but I can translate it. What you see in the picture, it's sort of a power suit designed for nurses in hospitals. As you all know, we are facing the aging population problem in the most European countries and even in Asian countries. So with this kind of power suit, the nurse has the power of 10 nurses and, and can really efficiently work with the patients uh, on the bed department. But what is said in the picture is that uh, uh, the design of the prototype is not yet very user friendly, <laughs> but it will be made better. So uh, <clears throat> my message uh, for, for you and uh, especially for uh, the managers in industry companies and, and so forth is that Maybe it's a bit too late to ask the designers to help in this phase. Maybe they should be there 
a bit earlier. And uh, maybe the designers as experts should not be only seen as outsiders that come at certain point to help with uh, projects or particular development things. Maybe they should be part also uh, the internal processes in the organization and also then uh, develop uh, some authority and power to become part uh, of the company boards and, and uh, also uh, part of the strategic planning. Well, uh, technologies change, uh, electronics, microprocessors become more efficient, the batteries and everything is developing, but uh, perhaps it's even bigger change that has happened on the software uh, and application side. The business there is uh, already bigger than uh, the hardware. Who could imagine some years back that people are willing to pay for an application that makes uh, your picture look weird? Uh, we had some interesting discussions about Spotify. Uh, these kind of things, they, they uh, change uh, whole businesses radically. But if I come to my uh, latter part of the presentation, the design factory as part of Alta University, that was mentioned in the title, uh, I often use this painting describing university education 650 years back. You can easily identify the professor, the students and the assistants, someone sleeping there, someone making notes. What has changed in these 650 years? Well, I think the biggest change is that we professors, we, we are not having our nice ivory towers anymore, like in this picture. So, uh, for certain disciplines and purposes, uh, I think uh, this may be good, but not enough. Lecture, as is, is not anything bad. <clears throat> Just think about this best-selling book by Randy Pausch, The Last Lecture. <coughs> <clears throat> they had it, this tradition that retiring professors, they, they are giving their last lecture uh, before they go. But in this case, it really was his last lecture because he knew that he will die in cancer. So how does that make the situation? That is quite interesting uh, thing to think about. Uh, <clears throat> very late last year, Reuters published uh, a survey by McKinsey where <clears throat> one of the final conclusions was that the employers, the education providers and youth, they seem to live in parallel universes by having exactly uh, the same situation but completely different understanding. Well, uh, for, to avoid this uh, situation, we have been developing things for years, some plans and experiments and uh, concept, uh, conceptual designs about this design factory concept that is now real. It has actually been working for five years in Finland, Espo, Otaniemi as part of the Balti University. So what it is. That is what I'm going to explain in the next uh, slides. By definition, uh, the design factory of Aalto University is an experimental co-creation platform. For all of these three, education, courses, research, but also application of product design. And uh, this definition uh, also quite nicely defines who are the users. The biggest headcount uh, is of course students, uh, but also some research groups and business partners, companies, NGOs, other organizations, 
So every day when you come to this place, uh, you can meet uh, some representatives of, from each of these groups. We have one very simple goal for all this. We want to educate the best designers in the world. This is uh, quite humble uh, goal, but uh, we have been thinking very much, what do we need for that? What is uh, what are the enablers of something like this? Uh, <clears throat> maybe many of you are familiar with this SlideShare uh, website. Uh, this, uh, I would just uh, like to show you a few uh, slides from this uh, Shift Happens uh, slide set. The statements that actually in the universities we are preparing students uh, for jobs that do not exist by using technologies that haven't invented yet. Those kids who are in the high school uh, 2013, if we are lucky, they will get their degree from uh, university 2020 and we know that they will be still uh, be uh, in, in working life in 2070. So what do we know about the world? How is it in 2070? Well, maybe some things may, may change fast, uh, but some other things may, may change uh, much slower. So, uh, these are my receipts for uh, setting up a good factory uh, in Finland, anywhere, design for flexibility, try to maintain the feeling of, of love, care, respect. Actually, uh, the name of Aalto University, uh, it came from a name-giving competition uh, where 1700 uh, suggestions were piled in. For some time I was re really uh, unhappy that my own suggestion just came uh, a second, but uh, I'm, I'm coming over it. <laughs> so instead of the University of Love and Culture, we now have Aalto University. <laughs> but uh, it, it has some benefits, for instance, uh, in the list of universities in alphabetical order. It's <laughs> always uh, positioned well. Uh, the energy, level of energy, having fun, that is a question that some people often ask us, why, why it's so important? I will explain that in the next slide. Uh, it's about learning and uh, even the management of the university encourages us that, hey, you have your license to do things a bit differently. And of course, uh, the students in Centric. The most important person of Aalto University is not the president or any of the deans. It's the student of Aalto University. So, uh, my priorities for Design Factory, but for any of you, the, the answers uh, <clears throat> for the question, what's the, uh, <clears throat> what's the meaning of life in decreasing orders of uh, importance are those that most important uh, it is to have fun. The second uh, important thing is to learn something new every day. And then the third one, to work like crazy. But just in this order, if you violate the order, nothing good will come out. Believe me, you can try. And actually, these are quite well in balance uh, with the science of work psychology. Uh, what makes a good working environment? Only very simple things, that you understand what you do, what is expected from you, uh, the demand of your work is in balance with your uh, skills, 
and abilities, and you receive feedback. Okay. As professor, uh, as Sasha mentioned, I'm instructing a course called Product Development Projects. Project. Uh, these are uh, the figures from last academic year. We had 19 simultaneous projects, uh, all with uh, private companies or organizations, sponsors, and uh, quite much work was put in those uh, learning projects by the students and by the faculty as well. External funds were raised for that, a lot of traveling, uh, and uh, actually in the CNC milling machines, the spindles were rotating 2,221 hours. And for those who understand anything about manufacturing, it's a high number when the manufacturing series size is maximum one. Uh, <clears throat> I have a false figure in this slide. The number of cup, cups of coffee is actually 42,000. So uh, that's the main uh, fuel for the engines of design factory. Uh, what comes to learning, uh, the students who come from all disciplines, design, architecture, business, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software, uh, what do they actually learn during this kind of uh, project learning course? Well, many things related to the topic, but in general, how to maintain safety, understand costs, design, prototyping, <coughs> team learning issues, most importantly perhaps, communication. Communicating with specialists from various fields. We can so easily use the same words and build sentences that seems to make sense and still understand each other in a totally different way. So, the first <coughs> slide about the uh, university uh, auditorium or classroom, why it's not enough? Well, lectures are good, but sometimes you just need to test. Have the feeling, how does it feel to use some special gear? Also, uh, the setups where you can learn, where, where you as a novice product developer can uh, learn from the experience from an older guy shall not be forgotten. <laughs> Going outside of the university, the campus, the ship simulators or real ships, passenger ships, cargo ships, military ships, to learn uh, how the navigation of a ship actually happens. Or go to the laboratories or factories to, know, uh, to learn to know the materials, processes, or <coughs> Go to the gaming fair in London if you work uh, with gaming industry. Or uh, most of the students, they, they are not hunters. They don't have hunter exper uh, uh, experience themselves. But if they are asked to develop something that will increase hunting safety, I think uh, the only good starting point is to go and get some experience. Hunting safety, you may wonder, Finland is a rather uh, big country in square kilometers and we only have five million people there, so you can just <laughs> show that it's, it's a low probability that you will hit anything. <laughs> but uh, uh, even if it's not a problem in, in Finland, uh, in Spain only, during the last hunting season, more than 700 hunting accidents were reported. And not speaking about Italy, just in the first two days when the hunting season started, 13 people were killed. So, uh, it really is an issue. Uh, product developers uh, in general, uh, they, they have, uh, I don't know why, but they, they seem to have some issues. Uh, to go to the potential users with unfinished 
prototypes or plans. And uh, this is also something that we uh, try to uh, uh, encourage the students uh, to do, to use the opportunities to, to meet the potential users in the early phases. You can prototype and test uh, interesting things. What you see in the picture seems to be an ordinary performance uh, by, by the artists of the Finnish Music Academy. But uh, what makes the difference uh, is that we also had uh, some guys from the State Research Center with their computer systems and uh, the performance hall was modeled in Second Life. All the artists, they had their avatars there and uh, uh, even the, the audience from distant places, they could join in and have their own avatars and send in their online comments from England, from Italy. And uh, it was quite an uh, interesting uh, experiment of a new kind of uh, uh, music performance. Uh, quick and dirty testing of ideas. Uh, what is happening in this picture, uh, the students were asked to develop uh, a method for a uh, healthcare industry uh, to keep a patient still under uh, uh, digital imaging. And uh, one of the simple ideas was that uh, <clears throat> why don't we use some sort of uh, vacuum force? Uh, so. Uh, by a regular vacuum cleaner, uh, a plate, and this uh, uh, plastic uh, line, and they, they made the first test. I was testing it as well. And uh, I must say that this is something that makes uh, the professor's life also interesting, <laughs> uh, especially when you need to explain to the accounting office why it was necessary to buy this silicon liner from a sex shop. <laughs> uh, finding new kind of uh, perspectives to things. We have one of, the, of our research groups uh, hosted at Design Factory called MIND. And uh, <clears throat> maybe you guys are familiar with those uh, fast lane cashiers in shopping mall. If you just have a limited number of items, you can choose the fast lane. Yeah. So uh, what was introduced in the biggest shopping mall uh, in our town, Espo, uh, is a slow line cashier. <laughs> there, there are even sofas and cafe, and uh, the cashier lady has all the time to chat with you, as long as you want. <laughs> It has become really popular. Uh, well, uh, doing design uh, is demanding and uh, it's sometimes a bit desperate, but uh, rewarding uh, thing. But uh, there's also often a need to tell about your work, tell your stories and uh, you never know who is coming for a visit and uh, you, you still shouldn't uh, freeze or hesitate uh, to explain your story. So this is uh, quite an important uh, part of, of the learnings. Uh, the design factory concept that we have in Finland uh, has now uh, spread so that we have uh, the second factory in Shanghai at Tonji University, the third one in Melbourne at Swinburne University of Technology. Uh, then there is one in Santiago de Chile uh, with the Pontificia University Católica and uh, also in, in Switzerland at CERN, the Particle Physics Research Center, and some others uh, may come. So uh, this has been uh, quite interesting uh, uh, experiment and learning experience, how uh, to come over the, the, the cultural uh, borders, 
to bring in the design factory concept to completely different kind of environments. What are actually those uh, core things that you can uh, still uh, have there if, if you go to such distant places? Well, at least there are some things uh, that I would uh, advise you to avoid or if you want to build the factory from hell here in Ljubljana, then uh, just pay attention on this uh, to make it really bureaucratical, theoretical, conventional, very narrow, uh, hierarchical, avoid any risks and uh, just uh, put a lot of e effort for administration. Uh, but <clears throat> sometimes uh, it has been said to me that uh, you must think how to uh, end your presentation, so maybe this is not uh, a very good final slide to end up with. <laughs> so <clears throat> instead, I will finish with this uh, very famous picture, actually, uh, taken from... Uh, yeah, does anyone know where is it from? Tour de France, of course. Uh, that the year was 1923. Uh, as a symbol, uh, I really love this, uh, what is said in the picture. This is what I want to see at the design factory. This is what I would like to see here as well. The friendship and the spirit. Just think about the hardest biking competition in the world just in the toughest climbs at the mountains of Pyrenees. The guy there has the will to help his uh, athlete mate to light up his cigarette. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Thank you.